Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be taking these 350VA um, valve covers and we're going to repurpose them into wall lights. Roll intro. How the hell did you manage that? In all honesty, I have no idea. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As mentioned, we are turning these into wall mounted lights. So the plan for it is, uh, just give them a bit of a clean up, make sure that they're all not so dusty anymore. Uh, then we're gonna tackle something that I've never used on the channel before, but something I'm curious to have a go with is like a dremel -y kind of thing. Um, the plan for it is, cut out the 350 bits and these three, uh, three sort of marking bits um, so that it's see-through there. Have it raised just slightly off the wall, it would use in plugs, and then when it's on the wall and mounted, it should glow behind, underneath, and through the actual thing. So let me get some measurements and get these lights ordered. Okay, so the original plan with these was to use a piece of string, measure up the string, and see where we're at. I can't find my string. It's somewhere, but I don't know. So instead, we're gonna use trusty old masking tape, and get the job done. <laughs> we can just only assume that that's the right. Yeah, there we go, done. Easy enough. Probably could have been a lot better, but obviously these are old engine parts. They're a bit greasy. So let's get this measured and see what kind of lights we need to get ordered. Right, so it's clearly just over a metre. So they don't do 1.5 metres, they only do one and two metres. So I'm probably gonna order the two meter one um just to be on the safe side but we'll crack on with that and uh yeah we'll get them ordered okay so the led lights are ordered and ready to go uh they should be here tomorrow so hopefully i can crack on with that then uh the next bit is to kind of work out how to get this cut down to the right place using the right tools i've never used one of these in my life so this could be quite interesting. I don't know what the tools do. It doesn't have an instruction book. It's gonna be fun. Anyway, I have some jobs to do today, so I'm gonna crack on with those and we'll crack back on with this tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day and we're about to crack on with getting these sorted. Um, I've been a bit this morning. I picked up these. So the long screws, but they've also got that sort of bolt look to them. So I'm hoping when the space has arrived tomorrow, I'll be able to pop these in, screw them into the wall, and hopefully it'll look right. But today, we're drilling holes into this thing. So this could go really wrong or really right. I still don't know. I borrowed this, which is older than me, and it's basically, it's just a punch so that I can drill out the holes I need to. So let's get cracking on with these. taking its time i'm back okay so we've used derek's punch and we have our markings out ready to tackle the drill bit i am a bit wary on this bit because all i've got to use is my clamp which is all good and it works and it's fantastic and i love the thing but for precision wise with a bad eye and all sorts i don't know how this is going to turn out I'm just hoping that it works out quite well, but we shall see when we start getting to cutting. So I've got my WD-40, I'm gonna use that to obviously use it as a, a cutting oil, because uh, I don't have any cutting oil, because I'm skinned. <laughs> but we're just gonna try and make it work and see what happens. 
if this one goes wrong, there's only going to be one light in the end. And uh, that one light will be probably taken across the road to be done on a pillar drill. If you have a pillar drill, definitely use that to drill your holes. I don't have a pillar drill, so we're going old school and we're using the trusty old screwdriver with the metal bit drill bits, which I did purchase because we saw it happen last time when I almost lost something important. Um, but yeah, we'll crack on with that and uh, we'll get going. Right. Okay, so from what I've read, this stuff can kick up some shards. So we have gloves on, eye protection on, and we'll start. I was gonna put it in the vise, but it started to warp this a little bit, so I don't want that. Ideally, it'd be clamped down, but instead I'm just gonna probably put holes through my table. Yeah, like I said, we're putting holes in the table, but we have holes in this. Winner. Right. We have holes. We are on to a winner. Now I've just got to do the rest of the goddamn thing. Okay, so we have the holes drilled. They're not the neatest, but they don't need to be because we're gonna crack on with the Dremel bit. Obviously the front end is kind of like sparkled out a little bit, but by the time that I've got them sorted and positioned right, then we're all good. We did hit a slight issue, this guy. So because of the way that this is, obviously if I was to cut round that, that's gonna fall out. So I am gonna try and kind of keep a little bit of edging on it just so that we can kind of keep it held in place and then the light will still go around it. But well, we, we live and we learn and we crack on with it. So now I'm just about to go eat and then I'm gonna crack on with the Dremel. And uh, I, I honestly, I've never used one before. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I'm hoping that it works and I'm hoping I have the right tools for it, but we will see. As you can see, it is no longer here. The Dremel is not doing the job it's meant to. Prime reason for it is because I don't have tungsten carbide bits and I'm cutting through the metal. So it's not the best. But luckily, my neighbor is an engineer. <clears throat> Doesn't like to be on film, so there won't be any of this filmed. But he is going to be milling out the lines for me um, so that it works properly. I've never used a milling machine. I don't know what I'm doing. He's a very precise engineer. So I'm gonna get that done and then we'll have a look at it once it's uh, once it's back. So it's, it's gonna be good. I know it's gonna be all right, so it's not worries. Also, official injury 101. I don't know how I got it, but blood. Okay, so there we have it. It is partially milled out. So there's a couple of bits that we couldn't actually get with the milling machine because it would have just broke the metal or pinged it off. So we've got what we can. Um, and I am going to attack this with a hand file until it looks somewhat presentable. But I'm happy with how that's turned out. You can see the 350, you can see the edge bits. Pretty happy with that. Now I'll get the files out and uh, crack on with that. We'll see you in about a week. Had a pair of gigs somewhere.
That made it a little bit easier. Not gonna lie, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Bosh. Yeah, okay, so it's a bit speckly and not the greatest, but it's pretty much done. I'll probably fine tune it a bit more. All in all, I think that's turned out pretty well. Um, so what I am gonna do next is potentially get this cleaned up. So I'm not sure whether I'm gonna wire brush it or I'm just gonna use Scotch Bright and some WD-40 to just kind of take off some of the surface rust and then get it ready to clear coat. But like I said, pretty happy with that. Okay, so we got them all cut out. Um, the next part for this is basically getting them cleaned up because they do have patina on them, um, rust. Uh, so what I am gonna do is, I'm gonna use my scotch bright pads, some WD-40 and get this cleaned up before clean, clear coating them. I know clear coat doesn't stick to oil, but once these have been oiled and scotch bright padded, then I can put the acetone on and get them clean. So we'll crack on with that now. So let's start with the first bit. So I don't know if these have been sprayed previously because this has a nice thing that just came off the moment I hit it with the Scotch Bright. When I hit these with acetone, it should take off the grip and not the grip, the grime and stuff. So this is the part that I'm not. I kind of like the patina look on them. The problem with it was that it just didn't, it looks too rusty. And this is why we're gonna go with the full Scotch-Brite treatment for this. And now it's time to watch all of the, the shine leave these things. think it's probably best to actually leave some of the patina on this because I'm not going to get it all off of this scotch bright pad. It's going to take forever. If you're in the comments, let me know how I probably could have done this better. I know a grinding wheel with a wire wheel on it, a wire brush, and you've got most of it off. I kind of wanted to try and keep as much of the original sort of look of them as possible. Right. So, I have still got a bit more to scotch bright with these. A lot of it has come off, but not all of it. I do think that sleeping some of it is gonna to add to the effect when these are all done. But we're gonna get these done and then I'll uh, crack on with the acetone. Okay, so we're just gonna get the acetone now and give this a bit of a clean. Uh, so this should, in theory, take off all the oil that we've popped on there. things with acetone a bit more often. It's turned out shinier than it was before. Hmm. Right, what I'm gonna do, I've got my little pot up there, I'll clean these and pop them up there.
One thing that I absolutely hate, cleaning. <laughs> Why can't things just be, be clean? Makes more sense. Shiny and nice. Happy with that. Bush. Right, let that dry. Okay, so there we have it. Acetone, cleaned, good to go. So what I need to do now, just give them a few, get this all cleaned up a little bit, and then we're gonna clear, clear coat the insides. So the bits that aren't gonna be seen are getting clear coated, just for that extra level of protection. Plus, when it comes to actually sticking the uh, LED lights, it should give me a better surface to stick it to. So, I'll tidy up, and then we'll come back, and we'll get the first bit of uh, clear coat done. Right, so, we have it here. I am just going to do a few layers of clear coat on the middle, and then eventually flip it over and we'll uh, get some clear coat on the outside. Right, leave that to dry for a bit. Okay, so you've seen me do plenty of clear coating, so I'm not going to bore you with this. We're going to get these clear coated, and then I have some stuff to do tomorrow, but in the afternoon, evening time, it'll be putting the final touches onto this. And then this project should, in theory, be done. But I'll give this a bit of time, let it set a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, good to go. So I'll see you tomorrow when we're adding the... Uh, finishing touches and give you the big reveal. Right, so we're gonna fit the LEDs on and see how this turns out. So these are waterproof LEDs. So I'm hoping that they do the job I'm meant to. See, this is what's annoying me, it's right fiddly, and because I haven't got nails, it's taking the absolute Michael. Come on. <laughs> Six and a half hours later. Right, okay, so we have the sticky ready to go. Oh, it's tacky as a wet fat. It's not even, it's not even tacky. Might stick to some stuff, but it ain't sticking to this. Right, so I'm gonna have to get some kind of adhesive that I've got lying around. Again, when does it ever go to plan? Okay, so the lights are fitted. And obviously, when it's the right way around, I'm gonna flip this. Ooh. That's what it's kind of looking like. Obviously, the spaces are bolted through and it'll look spot on. So, I was gonna film me putting them on. It was a pain. I've had to use double sided sticky stuff. I may even take them off to replace them, but that's where we're at. So, as you can see, we have the lights in, we have it all ready to go. I am probably gonna have a fiddle about with these lights, make sure they fit securely, um, and then I will give the big reveal. Enjoy. we 
you have it. Fully working, fully on the wall. Um, it's not in completely tight because I have decided I am going to sell these. Um, but yeah, I am massively over the moon with how that looks. Like I said, it changes colour. It's got red, green, blue, anything you need. So more than happy with how that's turned out. So that is how you make wall lights out of valve covers. I am really happy with how they've turned out. There has been a few things along the way. Um, definitely, definitely use good tools. Um, the lights on the inside didn't stick well at all using the double sided. So what we ended up doing in the end was using uh, Gorilla Glue epoxy to kind of stick them, stick them onto the metal so they'd stay uh, and clamp in that in place whilst it dried. All in all, I'm really happy with how they've turned out. And in an ideal world, they would go into the workshop or into a home office of some kind. But I don't have either, and I don't have any space in the workshop. So they are going to get sold. And probably, or hopefully, by the time you guys see this video, they will already be gone. Um, but I did enjoy making them. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was really interesting to, to kind of try and work with the shape of it. I um, really enjoyed doing the video anyway. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the big reveal. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Let me know if there was anything that you would have done that I didn't do. There's probably a lot. So thank you again and I'll see you on the next video. Uh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>